God wants you to be, what you need to be as a Christian, one that is enabling you to be an example to other people so that they too may come to know and receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior. When we were adopted into the family of God, when we accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior of our lives, God had a plan and a purpose for us. We were always to be victorious We were always to be witnesses for the Lord Jesus Christ, and we were always to be growing in the knowledge of Jesus. That doesn't always happen, though, in a Christian's life. And sometimes in churches it doesn't even happen in the church, that people are growing, that they are progressing, in their lives as Christians. They stay the same or they go backwards. You see, Christian growth and maturing spiritually as Christians doesn't just happen. You've got to work at it. You've got to do something for it to come about in your life. I think a lot of times... And a lot of times churches give this idea. You come and you just sit there and you're going to grow as a Christian. And that's not going to happen. That's never going to happen. You may get a little bit here and a little bit there. And you may experience little bits of growth. But there's not going to be the major growth that you should be experiencing as a Christian. Now, some of you may be fairly new believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. And you're a babe in Christ, and the Bible says that. It says, as babes desire the sincere milk of the Word. That is the Word of God. Ken has done a fantastic job of getting the songs that were just right for the message. And he knew what the message was about because I said I was going to do two sermons about studying the Word of God. But I didn't tell him where or what the title of the sermon was. But that's the Holy Spirit working between the two of us. Now, as long as he continues doing that, Ken's okay. (laughs) But... It's a, it's a good example of that. The Word of God is what is going to enable us to grow. Now we can say, well, there are a lot of ministries of the church, or five different ministries of the church, and we need all five of them. And last week I preached Uh, about education as well, studying the Word of God. But it's going to be a lot, not the same sermon, but a lot the same thing today. Because the passage that we're going to be in today is kind of a disappointing piece of the Word of God. It's a very disappointing piece of the Word of God. So stand with me as I read, and you can follow along. Hopefully in your Bibles, and there are pew Bibles, or on the screen, Hebrews chapter 5, beginning in verse 12. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age, that is, those who by reason of use have their series or senses exercised to discern both good and evil. 
Therefore, leaving the principles of the elementary or the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms, of laying on of hands, of resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permits. Father, as we come to you today, we thank you and praise you for loving us, for all of the blessings that we receive from you. Father, we praise you for leaving us your word to guide us through this world, to guide us through this life, and without it, we're, we're stumbling in the dark. We have no idea of where to go, what to do, even how to do anything apart from your word. And I pray today, O oh Lord God, that we will have a great desire to know more about it, to know the deeper things of God, to know more intimately the Lord Jesus Christ and His ways, His Word, as it guides us along through this life so that we can be victorious, so that we can be witnesses, so that we will grow spiritually and be able to live for you, be able to enjoy the life that you have given us to live, that we might have it abundantly as we understand you and your word. And I ask it in Jesus' name, amen. you be seated. As we think about this and look at it and look at what was written here, as I said a while ago, it's extremely sad. It's disappointing that the writer of Hebrews said about these Christians as he observed them that he was basically disappointed in them. Disappointed that they were not growing as Christians. That they were staying babies in Christ. And he told them the reason why and what they needed to do about it. I think God is blessing here at Brown Road. If I remember right, last Sunday we had 298 in worship and 202 of those were in Sunday school, Bible study. Now that's great. I've said it before, but in the last church I was at, we could have 450 in worship and be lucky to break 100 in, Bible, in Sunday school. And I think that if it was Paul or whoever the writer to Hebrews was, in that situation he might would have said, you're still babes in Christ. You need to grow. Folks, you cannot grow as a Christian apart from the Word of God. The verse that I quoted before from Peter, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, as just like a baby needs milk and then strained food and then they can go up to the chunky baby food and then they can do some other stuff and as they get older and older, they're eating more and more. 
and solid, more solid food. And as they eat more solid food, guess what they do? They grow. One of our great problems today is we have gone from solid food to donuts. <laughs> and we've kept growing, but the wrong way. The Word is the food that Christians need to grow on. You will never grow in spirituality until you are in the Word of God. That is the only way that you're going to grow. I started a new members class this morning, and if you can still get in it if you want to be in it, it during Sunday school. But what we do is we start out like we're on a journey and going someplace, you need a road map to get there. We're living life. And a lot of people just think they can live it any way they want to, any way they choose, and they're going to be a good Christian doing whatever they want, and they'll never, it'll never happen. You need a road map. And this is the road map that we have. So I want us to take this passage this morning. And I want us to look at, uh, well, three or four different things in it. We'll make it three, but I'll take the fourth and put it in the introduction. But Paul, or the writer to, I'll say Paul, the writer to Hebrews, observed these Christians, and he observed that they were not growing. Now, they may have all been in church. They may have been singing. They may have been doing a lot of other things, but they were not growing spiritually. And that's why I said, you're still on the milk. You're still a babe. You may be a 30-year-old Christian, but you're still on the bottle spiritually in your understanding of the Word of God. You shouldn't be there. You should be on the solid food. You should be deeper and deeper and deeper into the Word of God. Now, that means getting deeper theologically. It doesn't mean well, I've read Revelation, what else do you want? You know, I've made it all the way through Revelation, okay, but what does it mean? How has it impacted you? How has it changed your life? When you read the Bible, what are you getting out of it? How is it changing you? How are you growing? Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. By having God's Word in our life and knowing what God is wanting from us and expects from us, then we are better able to do that. So he looked at him and he saw, you, you haven't progressed. Now how would he know that? Maybe by watching their lives outside of the church. Maybe by watching what they did or what they were not doing. Maybe they weren't being witnesses for the Lord Jesus Christ. Will a mature Christian be a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ? Yes. Maybe they weren't ministering to other people. Maybe they... You can just go down a big list of things that maybe they weren't doing. And when Paul looked at that and he said, if you were spiritual, if you were growing as a child of God, you would be doing these things. You would be taking part in these things. There would be no doubt about it, but they weren't. So I want us to look today, one, 
why they, well, why they weren't growing, and a couple of things in that. First, teaching. Maybe they weren't growing because of the teachers that they had. Maybe the teachers weren't teachers. Maybe they were just people to fill a position. And especially in smaller churches, I've seen it done. I've done more than seen it done. I've done it. To where you need someone to teach a class. And no one wants to teach that class. So you find someone that might be halfway decent at it, and you back them in a corner, and they're in that corner where they can't get out, and you beg and you plead and you cry and you do all these things, and finally, so they can go home and eat supper, they say, okay, I'll do it. And they go, and they start teaching that class. Well, they're not a teacher. They're only there to please me or someone on the nominating committee or whatever it might be. They might even have good intentions. Well, I'll take this class and I'll try it, but they don't have the spiritual gift of teaching. They don't need to do it. Because the person teaching the class needs the spiritual gift of teaching in order to do that. You know, there is a reason that God gives us the gifts that we have and the gifts that the church needs. There is a reason that God puts you here in this church. Because you have gifts of the Holy Spirit that this body needs. And one of those gifts is teaching. And as we need teachers, God will move teachers into the church. And the classes need to be led by people with the spiritual gift of teaching. A couple of reasons why. One is if you don't have the gift of teaching and you're leading that class, you're going to get burned out real quickly. You're going to get tired of it. You're going to have expectations. Maybe the church has expectations. And you're not meeting those expectations because you're not equipped spiritually to do that. Second reason is the class isn't going to grow. They're not going to grow spiritually because you're not able to communicate the spiritual truths of the Word of God. Now, a person can talk about the Bible, but there, listen, there is a tremendous difference between talking about the Bible and imparting spiritual truths from the Word of God. There's a major difference between talking about it and being able to impart spiritual truths from the Word of God. Another thing about teachers is teachers, you can't teach your class what you don't know. Kind of makes sense, doesn't it? You cannot teach your class what you don't know. So that means a teacher has to be a student before they're even a teacher. They have to learn. We're going to do some new classes here at the church and got some, I've got Brother Ken's got some ideas, I've got some ideas, and we're going to get together on his ideas and my ideas, and he's going to teach one coming up. I'm going to do the sanctuary uh, 
Michael Lida is going to be teaching one coming up. But maybe sometime in the future, I want to get someone else to do the sanctuary and I want to teach one. Uh, or maybe I want to go to one. Because what I'm going to say right now is all teachers ought to be in a class learning. And that applies to me as well. Maybe sometime a class will get started and I'll say, Brother Amos, Brother Amos, how about doing Wednesday night for six weeks? And of course, Brother Amos is going to say, okay. <laughs> because I need to go to class. I need to learn. I don't just need to always be the teacher. I need to be the student sometimes as well. Because you can't teach what you don't know. You've got to get into the Word. You've got to be a student of the Word of God. You've got to pray and you've got to ask the Holy Spirit to teach you the spiritual truth of the Word so that we can do it. Maybe, and not here at Brown Road, but maybe a teacher can be a little bit dull. I have occasionally seen one that's a little bit boring. We have business meeting Wednesday night. And Brother Ken gave his report. Now he was given a report about music ministry and education ministry. He was bouncing off the wall. He was over here, he was over there, he was rocking back and forth, he was rocking sideways. He was, you know why? Because he was excited about what he was talking about. And we have to be excited about what we're talking about. You're going to stand in front of a class. And when you stand in front of that class, you have got to believe deep down in your soul that you are there to make a difference in their lives that day. And if you're not there to make a difference in their lives, you don't need to be there. You're going to teach them something. You're going to show them something from the Word of God that's got you excited. Now, I'm not saying you've got to get up and bounce off the wall. But what I am saying that the truth of the Word of God excites us. I mentioned reading through the Bible and gone through Genesis. And you think about Genesis and the just Old Testament stuff. It was so exciting to read how things began. And how God moved everything and blessed Israel and all that He did and all that He promised. It's just so exciting. And then you get up and you're going to teach it to your class. Don't make it something dull and boring. It's something that they need to hear. And because the Holy Spirit has worked in your life, you can't wait to get it out. You may do the whole class in five minutes because you're so excited. It just all spills out at one time. You said everything, you, you got it all on your mind. And sometimes I forget something here and sometimes I may walk by someone and because I got things on my mind. And occasionally you just get up and you say everything all at once and you think, boy, I got 25 more minutes to fill up. Teachers, you need to be excited about what you're teaching. How can you expect your class to get excited about the Word of God if you're not excited about the Word of God? It's contagious. Excitement is contagious. 
not fake excitement, but I've read it, and I, you know, you look at this passage here, boy, you think, well, that is a really messed up passage because he's talking about people and fussing at people that should have grown, and they're not growing. But we look at it, and you know the thing about it is, they can still grow. They're not doomed to being on the bottle for the rest of their lives. They can still grow. Well, that's the teachers. The teachers need to be excited. They need to be students of the Word because they can't teach what they don't know. You know, you've heard the thing about leadership. You can never lead people to go where you have never been. You can't teach them if you don't know what you're teaching. But then, he's talking about the people. In verse 14, he says, But solid food belongs to those who are of full age. They've grown. There aren't too many brand new Christians in this sanctuary this morning. Most of us have been Christians for quite a few years. We might would come under the category of full age. You have reached full age, not as old as you're going to get, but you've reached an age where you should be off the milk, off the strained baby food, off the chunky baby food, and starting to eat Solid food and more and more solid food. You're that age. But then look at what he says. Solid food belongs to those who are full age, that is, those who by, I underline these next words, those who by reason of use. Those who by reason, You see what he's saying? It's not going to happen automatically. I'm sitting here and I'm waiting for God to send some angel that's got a picture of knowledge and wisdom that is going to be able to unscrew some little port on top of my head and put a funnel there and pour some knowledge and wisdom, discernment in my head. It ain't going to happen. By reason of use, you've got to study. You've got to get into the Word. Now I said the teacher needs to be in the Word even more than you do because they've got to teach you something that maybe you don't know or you haven't heard or present it to you in a way as the Holy Spirit shows them that is going to enable you to live a more victorious life as a Christian. But you've got to get in the Word too. He said, by reason of use, have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. If you won't, To build muscles, you got to maybe do some push-ups, lift some weights. Donuts don't weigh enough. Never going to get it done that way. You got to work out to build muscles, to become spiritual, you've got to work out in the Word of God. You've got to read it, you've got to study it, you've got to know it. Again, we go back to that song, Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. Thy word, because I know what the word of God says. Now sometimes people say, well, 
maybe I'm just not as smart as someone else. Doesn't matter. Because you've got the Holy Spirit to teach you. And the Holy Spirit will teach you if you will simply let Him do it. You know, when the Holy Spirit starts teaching you the Word of God, don't ever tell Him that He's doing it wrong. Don't ever say, well, that's not the way I was brought up to believe it. Listen to the Holy Spirit. And what He is saying to you, what He is teaching you to do. So as a student, you need to listen. Let me ask you a question. If you weren't here for Sunday school this morning, how did you learn what the teacher was telling the class? How did you grow spiritually in the knowledge of the Word of God when you had an opportunity to come to learn and you didn't do it? You can't. Now, I watched Adrian Rogers this morning, and I know a lot of people watch different pastors on TV. And uh, Adrian Rogers was pre- started a sermon or a series of sermons on marriage, and he really told the women where their place was this morning. <laughs> Y'all go home and watch it this afternoon. I'm not going to repeat it because I'm not as brave as him. We're giving you an opportunity to learn, to grow spiritually. We have Sunday school or Bible study, whatever you want to call it, every Sunday morning at 9.30. There is not a single person that doesn't have a class that they belong in. Not only do we have Sunday school, But in the sermons, I try my best to teach the Word in the sermons. You need to be here for worship services, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. Now, beginning in March, not only are we having the adult class in here on Wednesday night, but we're going to have two more adult classes over in the uh, education building. Brother Ken is going to be leading one. Are they in the thing here, Ken? Okay. Brother Ken is leading a class, Jesus Among the Secular Gods, and Brother Mike Lida is leading Follow Me, What does it mean to be a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ? Now, adults, on Wednesday night, you got three options. You can go with Brother Ken, you can go with Brother Mike, or you can come on here in the sanctuary, and I will continue a study here in the sanctuary. We all need to rotate around and need to learn as much as we can about the Word of God. Why is it important that we do that? Why is it important that teachers teach and teach with enthusiasm and know what they're teaching? Why is it important for the student to get into the Word of God, to study? In our new members class, one of the people in the class said, I always go back and look at what the teacher taught and what the preacher preached to make sure that it was right according to the Word of God 
and added this to it, I have no problem going to them and telling them if it, I didn't think that it was right. Well, you know what? That is exactly what Paul commended the people of Berea for. For studying what he preached to see if it was right according to the Word of God. Why is it important for you to be there? Why is it important for you to learn and for you to study and be taught by the Holy Spirit at home? It's simply important for this because you're never, ever going to do anything for God that is acceptable to God unless you're doing it correctly. So many churches... We got this shoot from the hip mentality. We do it just any way, a shotgun approach. You shoot a shotgun and the pellets just go like that. And hopefully one of them will hit. It's not the way you do church. We can't do it. And we can't do it correctly if we don't know and understand God's Word. And here at Brown Road, we want to do it correctly. We don't want to just do because you want to do. We want to do because it's what God wants us to do. And then do it the way that God wants us to do it. And we can be taught that in the Word of God and through being submissive to the Holy Spirit. Now, none of this is really going to help you until you receive Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. The Holy Spirit will convict you of your sin and of righteousness and judgment to come but it's not going to help you grow as a Christian until you become a Christian. And how do you become a Christian? You admit to God that you're a sinner. You're at the place where you know there is nothing that can ever help you. You're at rock bottom. Church can't save you. Your money can't save you. Your parents can't save you. Your grandparents can't save you. Nothing can save you but the Lord Jesus Christ. And at rock bottom, you look up and you cry out, Lord Jesus, I surrender it all to you. I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Are you willing to do that today so your sins can be forgiven? so you can receive the gift of eternal life. He will forgive you, He will save you, and He will empower you by the Holy Spirit. Because the baptism of the Holy Spirit isn't some future event. It happens the moment you're saved as we're baptized by the Spirit into the body of Christ. He will empower you to live for Him and to serve Him. Christian, where are you at in your spiritual life? Are you on the solid meat? You see, Paul said here, we've always got to go back to the basics, salvation, baptisms, things like that. We've always got to go there because you can't understand the deeper things of the Word of God. Are you growing spiritually because you are into the Word of God? You're eating the solid food. You're diving into the Word. You're saying, you know, I'm not asking for you to do it, but it would be nice if sometime someone would come and say, well, will you take us deeper instead of 
Well, what you're talking about is over my head. Let's go deeper. In everything we do, so that we can grow stronger and stronger and stronger. If you've never invited Jesus to come into your life, I'm inviting you to come this morning. We're going to sing a song. We're kind of old-fashioned here. We still have an invitation. And I'm going to ask you, if you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, to wherever you are in this sanctuary, to move out and come down these aisles and just tell me, say, Pastor Mike, I want to invite Jesus to come into my life. One of our deacons will come and pray with you about that. They won't force you or trick you to do anything, but they will talk to you about it, and if you will, to, for you to pray and invite Jesus to come into your life. Maybe you're here and you're not a member of Brown Road, but you believe this is where God wants you to worship and serve Him at then you're going to come today and you're going to ask to join the church. Or maybe you just need to come, maybe kneel, stand at this altar and just say, Oh Lord God, I want to be a student of your word. I want to grow. I want Brown Road Baptist Church to be a church that is built on your word and sticks solidly to your word. Father, as we come to you today, we thank you and praise you so much for all that you're doing. I pray that every single person that's in here who needs to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior will cry out to you right now, save me, and come and let us know that they've done that and follow you in believer's baptism. I pray that others will come and join the church Others will come, Lord God, and make a commitment to be a student of your word, to dig into it deeper and deeper and deeper so that we can grow, that we can be a spiritual church. That is a church that is made up of spiritual members. So, Lord God, I just pray for your will to be done and you to be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen.